What's going on you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, welcome back. Now, I feel like this video has actually been a long time coming. People ask me all the time if I have any hints, tricks, tutorials on how to make their own custom boards, but it's been so challenging just to film it, just to try to be able to show you how to do these things. I haven't really had the resources or, you know, the equipment to do so. But now I've got two cameras, I've got better lights, I've got equipment to hold the cameras overhead. You've seen the top-down shots. So I thought today was finally the time to give it a shot. So today I'm gonna show you how to make a combo board with a full-size ESP32 room and an NRF24. So grab your soldering iron, solder, PCB, and some 90 degree headers, and let's get at it. Hey, it's actually end of video Sasquatch here before the video just to kind of issue an apology. This video is rough. Pretty much anything that could go wrong did go wrong. I made mistakes with soldering. Um, I soldered things on the wrong side. I mean, literally everything went sideways. In the past, I would have just scrapped the whole thing and said, screw it, no video this week. But I really want to make sure I'm still putting content out for you. It's not my best work, but it's kind of entertaining to see me struggle through this whole process. But I want to thank you guys so much for the support. You guys mean the world to me. I'm going to make sure next week I got a way better video coming out. So, all right, let's see how this goes. Unveiling my brand new desk mat. We've got my logo, Talking Sasquatch, the background from the website. Super cool. Got the um, RGB outline. Super, super cool. I'm really psyched to have this. So today we're going to need PCB. I've got an NRF24, one of the little ones, just because this is kind of an example. Um, I don't need to use one of my good ones. And then we have ESP32 Room. So let me go ahead and zoom in here. And yeah, zoom in. Cool, cool. So put these off to the side. And since we're soldering, I'm going to use my solder station, which is right, bam, right here. There we go. And I can actually zoom in some more. Oh, that's perfect. So parts, parts, parts. And then let me grab the soldering iron. Now, I always use this TS100. It's fantastic. This tip I like for what I'm doing here, which is just soldering to a PCB. Um, if I was doing some, you know, surface mount stuff, I could use a different tip, but this one works pretty well for what we're doing today. I also 3D printed this nice little stand. Gonna hold if this together. Nice. Also got some 90 degree header pins and the thinnest wire in the world. This is 30 gauge. It works just fine, but it is a little finicky. Um, you can go with 28, but this is what I have. This is what we're gonna use. Then I also have some very controversial solder. I got it from the rabbit from Rabbit Labs. This is actually lead-free solder, but it works beautifully. It's, you know, really good stuff. In case you're interested, it is made by Kester, so you know it's a good product. It's not cheap, but it works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our 90 degree headers and measure it up against the pins here so we can cut these off. So this goes to about here, being very careful not to do this wrong. And I got some flush cutters definitely makes life a little easier to have some nice cutters chop that right there bing and then we're gonna make sure that this matches our pinout perfect that's one move this over here and let's go to the other side one two three four five or whatever oh I guess it's eight counting's hard so we got eight pins right there measure that out take that snip <coughs> launch that one across the room yeet and then make sure this lines up and cool, we've done it. Let's clear up a little bit of space here because we don't need these. And then we're gonna line up our pins down at the bottom, where, and there. Whoops, come back. Let's make sure this all lines up. So we can just grab these and make sure they fit lined up with the flipper holes, which they do. Perfect, that's what I thought. Put this back down, ready to go. Actually, for this project, we're gonna solder them to the back. So let's just put them in the back here. A, it's gonna make it a little bit less awkward when it's actually on the flipper. And B, it's gonna make it, well, aw less awkward when it's on the flipper. <laughs> now I've got this chip quick, um, you know, no clean tack flux. It's kind of nice, you don't have to clean it up. It's not super acidic. I did burn a hole in it, so, you know, there's a cool little tape on there. But we're going to apply some flux to all of these. Slowly and carefully. Come on, flow. There we go. Try not to use too much, but there we go. Since it's no clean, you don't really have to worry about it too much. 
Now behold the wonder that is the TS-100. Once we plug that thing in and then tell it to go fast. So first of all, what's cool is it actually automatically rotates the display depending upon which way you're looking at it. So that's kind of fun. Turn this on. You can see the numbers are upside down. Turn it a little bit. Boom. Look how fast this heats up. It just cranks up there. So today I think I'm at 360. Whip, whip, whip. Yep, 360. So that's what we're going to use for now. So put this down for just a second and let me grab my solder. Here we go. Now keep in mind, I'm soldering at a very, very awkward angle because of the filming setup. So I know it looks like I'm super shaky and stuff, but it's because I'm trying to solder kind of out in front of myself, which is super tricky. So we're just going to go ahead and tack down the first pen right here. So or solder um, tin your tip first. So melt a good bunch of solder on there. Nice and shiny and smoky. And then we're just going to go in there and just tack that in there. Boom. Might as well give another one in there real quick. And then check to make sure that those are lined up, which they are. I'm going to drop this other pin set. And just to make sure I don't drop those, let me tack that down as well. Solder. One. Two. And then clean my tip off. Put this guy right here. Clean. And then we can keep going. So now that we've done that, we're just going to go and rattle off the rest of them. Cool. And those are done. So now that those are on there, we're just going to give it a quick whoops that way. Try. Make sure everything lines up. Yeah, this one's a little bit down, but get them to line up here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so you can see this actual row, I didn't get super straight. So let me go fix that real quick. Quick little off camera resoldering later. And then, yeah, no problem. Everybody, whoop, I keep plugging it in backwards, but everybody lines up perfect. Now, one of the problems with um, the way this is going to be set up is that the case is going to get in the way. So unfortunately, with this setup, you're not going to be able to have a case on. Um, you can install standoffs or things like that, but Again, this is this is the basic, the most basic way of making these things. So we're not going to be able to have the case on for these ones. All right. So once we know that that all works, so don't touch the top, the hot part. Um, we're going to figure out how these chips work. So let me make sure this isn't going to fall over. Stay. Um, and let's grab our ESP32 to begin with. So here's our chip. And then the way this is set up, we can actually put this right up to the top here. Line this, whoop, one clip over, or one row over, sorry, column, one column over, calamari. The... There we go, plug that in, and that fits just fine, and with the NRF, ow, it's hot. <laughs> with the NRF, we can just put this kind of over here, or whatever, it doesn't have to be too fancy. So let's pull this off, and then we can get this tacked down. I'm just going to put one solder point on here real quick. Well, let's flux a little bit first. Alright, you got a gob on there, kind of just spread it out. Now for this, we don't even really need to solder all these pins on because it's not particularly important. All we really need to do is get effectively four wires hooked up. Ground, 3v3, TX, and RX. So let me tag one of these down without burning myself too much more. Tin it. Pop that on there. And then go over here, and I'll pop this corner down. And let's just do the four corners for the moment. Boom. No problem. Clean that. Put this down. Hopefully I don't burn myself too many more times, but I probably will. Now, at this point, it's a fantastic time for... Whoops, dropping stuff. These little guys that AWOC got me. So, four of these, and they just go right here in the little holes. Going to elevate this, and more importantly, hold it in place go do, do, do. Oops, missing the hole there there it is all right cool hold this down give them a spin i find to keep everything in one spot and in typical fashion and it's been a while since i built one of these and i'm now realizing i want to put these on the other side so i'm going to do a little bit of movie magic and i'm going to flip them around real quick a few moments later some quick movie magic later and we're back in action so the first thing we need to do is hook up some power lines so we look closely on here. I know it's really hard to see, but we have the 3v3 and the ground up there. So we're going to do 3v3 to the 3v3 line on the flipper. And if we look at our pin out here, 
3v3 shows up first pin, so that's right there. So let's wire that up. Flip this over, and just remember, this pin right there, that's the one. This guy. So we've got a piece of wire right here. Strip off an end here. Measure how far it really needs to go. One, two, about there. So we'll cut it to there. Give it a chop. Strip. Cool. And now we have a piece of wire. So grab the soldering iron. Pin the tip of the soldering iron. Bloop, bloop. Pin the wire a little bit. It's not going to hold a lot, but it doesn't really need to. Yeah, get in there. Let's get that right on this pin. Give it a little bend. There we go. Now, for a project like this, it's actually quite easy to solder these wires on because you don't really have to worry about really much anything. Just that you're not bridging things really, and that there's enough solder to hold it in place. I don't even care that this is on this other hole right there. Although, let me clean off some of this extra. I do have solder wick, but again, none of this really matters for this project. This is the most beginner stuff in the world. There we go. Clean that one up. And then we're going to drip, drip, uh, jump, jump it right over here. A little more solder. And then get it right down to this one. I'm going to run it on kind of the side here. It's a little long, so I'm gonna actually go ahead and chop that down a little bit. That's why we size these wires just a little bit long, because you never know when you're gonna make a boneheaded mistake. There we go. Back at it. Line it up with the pen here. Hold to the side, and then, bam, attached. Oops, not quite clean, there we go. And now to do ground. So let's cut another piece of wire. So again, we'll take a piece of wire, strip off not a ton and now i know that that one's 3v3 the one right next to its ground so we know what we're doing here and we also know that pin 2 is ground on this so it's going to go from there down to here come on so now we can cut this about there tiny strip on it that should be enough and let's get that one attached the so same idea as last time i'm going to tin this guy Now this one doesn't even have solder in it yet because I only soldered the four corners on this board. So I can actually take the wire, kind of drop it in there. And then boom, that'll adhere no problem. Stuck super good. Push this guy out of the way. And we're gonna whoop, give this a nice little bend. This is where working underneath the cameras and lights is a little tricky, but we will persevere. Put this here, fit that right like that. There's not a lot of solder on this point, so we may have to add some. Well, that held on pretty well, so I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. Let me give it just a little tiny bit more, but that's going to be fine. Cool. That's definitely fine. Again, clean up. So there is our power and our ground. Easy peasy so far. So next is the TX and the RX. So if we look at our chip right here, and actually let me grab a pair of tweezers so I can point at it. Again, this is probably going to be impossible to see, but we have TX0 and RX0. So we're going to start with TX0, which is the third pin down. One pin, two pin, three pin is TX0. So let's go ahead and drop a wire on TX0. So again, remember what side we're on, and we're on the third pin. All right, so we got our wire, kind of shorter. And then let's just connect to the third right there. Drop that in like so. Now there's no flux on you, so we'll get a little bit of flux. It's a lot of flux. I don't need that much flux. Just a little bit. That's the thing that I hate about this syringe, is it kind of like keep weeping after you use it. So it makes a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Get that wire good in there. Get enough. Pick this up without burning myself too badly. And solder. Oh, get the temperature solder here. And that should probably be enough. Hitting my microphone with the soldering iron. Cool. Look. And that one's on. We're going to tip real quick. And let's figure out where this needs to go. So we look at the flipper right here, which is hard to see because it's kind of out of focus because everything's on manual focus. We have the TX and RX. So TX goes to RX and RX goes to TX. So this is our TX wire. It's not going to TX. It's going to RX, which is... Let's see, from this side, one, two, three, four, five. 
So five pins in one, two, three, four, five, which would be right there. So let's shorten this wire up just a little bit and get it stripped. Let me make sure that we're not going to fall off of my thing here. Whoops. I'm like floating. There we go. Sometimes I put these on wrong. There we go. Much better. Alrighty. Back at it. Solder. Turn up. And then one, two, three, four, five. Keep it on this side of five because I'm going to get right into it next. Whoops. A little close. All right, cool. There we go. That's four pins right there, or three pins right there. Now we're going to go into RX, which I know is the next pin down. So let's prepare, prepare a wire and get into that one. Got ourselves our wire. Whoops, dropping my wire. Here we go. Again, pin the tip. Pop in there. Jam this wire into this hole right here. And then drop that in. There's enough flux next door from the other pin that this is fine. Put this down without burning ourselves. And I know it's going to go into the next pin here. So measure. And then we'll just clip that. Eh, get out of here. Pop you like that. Line this up on the other side of this pin. Make sure I don't accidentally bridge anything. There we go. And then reflow that point. Pull that off. And there we go. That's effectively how you wire up an ESP32. It's that simple. Four wires. Power ground, and then TX to RX and RX to TX. I'm going to say that over and over and over again, because I know down in the comments, I hooked up TX to TX and RX and it's not working. TX to RX, RX to TX. Cool, cool, cool. So that part's already done. So what we're going to do now is grab our NRF24. Again, this is the same one that has that I use all the time with the big antenna. This is just the small antenna version of it. Not a problem. I'm going to put this on the flat part for the moment to get one solder point down. Oops, dropped it. Give myself a little, actually, let me give myself a little bit more space because this is going to be all six wires. Let me put one little drop of solder on here to keep it in place. Because, yeah, it's not wanting to sit very flat with all the stuff that's on here. So sometimes what I do, and I know this is bootleg, but I'll grab, like, something. So here we go, something. This is some prototype merch. And then I'll use that to hold it up for the moment. Drop some solder on here just to keep this in place. Oops, probably should have tinned and did all the other stuff, but that's all right. That seems to be on for the moment. Let's just make sure that this all looks good. Is it flat? It's flat. Cool. Good, good, good. All that looks great. So I'm going to start attaching wires to this. And yeah, I'm just going to do a quick little time lapse and you can watch the whole thing happen in fast forward time. All right, we got them all together. It's a little bit wacky looking, but again, no big deal. As long as we keep everything more or less organized, we won't get too confused. Let's get these all kind of out where they go. Now, beforehand, you should probably do what I forgot to do, which is look at the pinout for it. I actually attached another wire, so I can pull up the pinouts here, and then it looks like the... Um, Number eight pins, so what's this? If we look at it, you'll notice the little square. Again, it's gonna be really hard to see and it won't focus, but this bottom one has a square around it which corresponds with a GPIO diagram. So we can look at it that way and it shows up. So pin eight, so this guy down in the corner, so the front, well, this bottom corner guy, I'm gonna pull the wire off of that because I don't need that guy anymore. So put this back on our thing. And then this wire, this wire will just remove. We don't need this little guy. Easy peasy, and it's gone. Done, done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and follow the wiring diagram, and I'm gonna start mounting things up, and yeah, another time lapse, because nobody needs to you know, watch me sitting here soldering for 20 minutes, when we can watch it go much faster. Now I am gonna share a ground with the, um, with the ESP32, I'm gonna do it up here. And the way I'm gonna do it is actually, I'm gonna bridge this already. So I'm gonna actually just add a bunch of solder 
and bridge these two holes right here. I'm going to call it a solder blob. There we go. And then I can take that solder blob, which is not bridging anything else, and then I can use that to connect my ground for the NRF. So melt this a little bit. Let's put this wire in here. Cool, cool, cool. Although, of course, now I'm looking at it upside down, and I've actually got the wrong wire, so let's grab the right wire. Ground is actually... Yeah, he's that guy. My fault. So we'll hook that one up to our solder blob. All right, this guy's ground. Pick this. Line it up over here. There we go. Ground is grounded. Yeah, definitely not doing a great job on this one today. Sorry, this is actually like my third video option and I'm soldering things all upside down and backwards. I apologize. This is gonna be just kind of one of those videos, but I'm gonna soldier on, we're gonna make it through. All right, after a few little hiccups and a few stumbles, there we are. So we actually have the whole board done. It's that simple, folks. Now you can see why it's so important to check and make sure that all of your wiring is correct. It is hard because you can't see what you're doing. You're upside down, so you have to flip things in your head. That's why I started wiring things backwards. But, you know, it's a learning process. You don't have to do it right every single time. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. I've definitely made mistakes on these over and over again, just like today. So, you know, these things happen. Well, that was quite the experience. I'm definitely out of practice and it's, I used to write things down and kind of make diagrams. I really should have done this in this case. It would have made things a lot easier. But, you know, you live and you learn and sometimes you make the same mistakes. But yeah, it's kind of a brief general overview on how to make your own boards. Just kind of go for it. See what happens. You know, make mistakes. That's kind of the fun of it all. I made so many boards that were, you know, not working or things that were miswired. Again, I'm still making mistakes. That's the fun of learning stuff. So yeah, thanks for hanging in there with me. We're going to catch you next time. Take it easy.